What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials, pick up your premium membership, it is 50 cents a day. And also, don't forget to stop by CMPKits.com, get yourself a copy of Drill Loops 2, get yourself a copy of Drill Mini, get yourself a copy of Ski Bass Samples Volume 12, and get to work. Now today we're going to be working in Studio One version 5 and I'm going to be showing you guys the ins and outs of how to use warp markers and it always it always makes me sad when I see a uh, um, a tweet or a comment um, something to the effect of like man you know studio one to really be next level when it gets warp markers like ableton and i'm like bro <laughs> bro so what i have now is i have a sample um random sample that i dragged in it sounds like this <laughs> Now say I want to say I want to warp this and I want to and I want to use it as a loop. All right. So this is like um, this is like one of them, one of them curated pre-cut loop packs. Right. And, um, you know, I ran it through I ran it through mixed and key and it's telling me the um, the the you know, the key of the sample and also the tempo. Um, so I'm going to see if I could get lucky first. And this is, this is always my process. I'm gonna see if I get lucky first and I'm going to stretch this, which is supposedly at 132 BPM and I'm working at 150 and I'm going to stretch it, um, over to this, um, to this, to the end of the eighth bar to see if I could get a loop. Now, the fastest way to do this is to hold down your option or your alt key. You see how my, um, how my mouse turned into, turned into a clock. This lets you know that you've activated the time stretch function, right? So, you, so I could stretch it out and, you know, make it like this. Oops. Right. And I can also, just like, just like live, there's different algorithms here. I don't know if you guys know this, but you have the, the tape, which I've done a video on. You've got Elastic Pro, which is the you know, the industry standard, that's what everybody uses. Um, and then you have, and then you have drums, which is, uh, which is, this is more, this is more for transients and this is more for something that's like an instrument, right? So I'm going to go ahead and change that. that. That's, that's like complex and complex pro. Um, and then I'll go ahead and shrink this down to my loop size. So now if I press play, <laughs> Now you could see that you know if I if I put this on the metronome like it looks good but it doesn't it, it doesn't it's not lining up with the downbeats. You see that <laughs> it got ugly. So in order to warp markers are always there just like um you know just like in live there's just it's just when when you work inside studio 1 that um that menu is hidden and what i suggest you guys do is studio one has you know this awesome feature where you hover over something and it'll tell you what it is so you know all your icons like hover over them and see if you know and see if that helper comes up uh you know like a lot of people don't know that there's a video player inside studio one so anyhow um if you find this guy right here this is your audio bend right and this is it'll it'll drop down your audio bend menu so you have some options you got you got detection which you have standard and sensitive mode um bend marker the, these are options right so this this eye right here it's going to change the color of the region it's going to allow you to see bend markers right then um you get to you get to pick which um which type of time stretch algorithm you want to use and then you could select if you want to quantize or slice at these bend markers, right? Now, how do you get how do you get bend markers in play? There's a couple ways to do it. Uh, the first way, which which I like to start at, is to is to um, you know set this to standard and hit analyze. And what it's going to do is it's going to is going to drop you a whole bunch of bend markers, especially if there's no drums in the track. Um, what you can then do is go to threshold and either increase it. 
right? And it'll give you even more band markers, or you can bring the threshold down, right? And it'll automatically give you band markers. Um, the way that the way that you go about manipulating these band markers is you want to go to this tool right here, the bend tool, right? Or you can press number seven on your keyboard. You'll get this icon. When you get this icon and you hover over a bend marker, right? Now you can move it left and right. And if we zoom out, right? If you zoom out, you can see. Red indicates that like it's not a warning or anything. Red indicates that this region has been has been stretched longer than it was originally. And green indicates that it's compressed, right? So that's that's all that's about right there. Now when it comes to um when it comes to stretching a sample like this, what I am going to do is I'm gonna put my own bend markers. And, and what I'll do is I'll start at the, um, is, is I'll drop one at the beginning, right? So now, now that I have one at the beginning, anything that happens after this will be stretched and I'm going to, and I'm going to search for the, uh, the, the, the piece of the sample that should be on the next downbeat. So like this guy right here, this should be, this should be on the three. Now your Ben marker is going to lock with your grid unless you hold down the shift key if you hold down shift key you could put it anywhere so when you hold down the shift key hit that guy right there now the bend the bend marker will sync to the grid again so it makes it super easy to quantize things right so now that i stretch that out this guy right here and I like to, uh, you know, I like to do it by by being zoomed out. It'll, if you zoom in, you know, it'll it, it'll stay like really like really super quantized and everything, and that's cool for some stuff. But if you have like a live piece of music, it might be better to zoom out and just and be a, a little less exact, and you'll kind of you'll you'll maintain uh, you know a little bit of swing. <laughs> And then this guy right here. And if we put our metronome on, you can hear it. And that's and that's really that's really all there is to it as far as as far as Ben markers inside Studio One, man. They're super they're super easy to use. Um, and uh, the other thing is the other thing the other thing that this will do, just so you guys can see it. Say I you know say I identified these downbeats, right? And I wanted to like say I had that guy there. What do we do? Before we go. So I, so I identified this one and and I wanted to quantize these, like say I wanted to quantize them to the grid. You know, I'll set my quantize value to whatever is gonna make sense. And then you just set action. And you press Q. Oops. All right. Select the region now and press Q. Boom. Automat it'll automatically do it for you. So that's so that's really good. That's really good with like break beats and stuff like that. All right, so if I took, I don't know, something like this. Set this to drums. Hit analyze. 
you know, set this to set this to eighth notes. Select a cue. You know, you want to make sure that you get that you want to get a, a a quantized value that makes sense, All right? So it'll do it automatically again, or you could go in and you know and and uh, and shift them around. But it's it's there. It's super powerful. It's super easy to use. Um, and there's no reason why you can't take advantage of it, man. So it's a CMP with Craftmaster Productions, studio12tutorials.com. You guys keep it simple, but do not be basic. And we'll see you on the next one.